Welcome to the fourth video in this series on the four different types of decisions. And we actually only arrived at the third type of decision, and that is? Critical moments. Okay, and if you have to say one thing about critical moments, like what is it you do at critical moments? You calculate. You calculate. So what do you have there? Hey, calculation. You'll probably put up a very nice thing yeah, about yeah. it. Yes. yes. So the 2000 and... 12 or 13 ACP book of the year, uh, which I was very sad about because as publisher we we hope that Judith Polka's uh, book uh, How I Beat Fisher's Record would win, but my own book beat it by one vote. Uh, we all voted for Judith, I have to say. Okay, so uh, critical moments are positions where for some reason we get the feeling that this is a moment where the best decision in this position will really, really be useful compared to the second best. The difference between the best and second best move in a simple position, which we had previously, can be considerable. Um, if we exclude blundering, uh, which can always happen and is not really relevant for, for what type of decision we're talking about, we could maybe say we talked about that a little bit in the second video. Mm -hmm about simply looking for options. But when we talk about uh, critical moments, there is something in the position that tells us that here accuracy will be rewarded greatly. Uh, most other times in chess you can be very accurate, but the difference between the best and second best move won't be great. Um, so there, there are different situations why, where Let's say we have the advantage, or we feel we have the advantage. Then it can be either all our pieces are in place for the attack, if we we have an attacking position, and if we don't do anything, then on the next move the the chances will be less for creating attack or exploiting our our good uh, placement of the pieces. That could be one hint. Another hint could be a lot of pieces are hanging. Uh, if we're on the defensive, it could be threats to our pieces. It would be just general discomfort. Um, or it could be that we feel we have a chance. We just see an option, maybe in a position which otherwise we didn't consider that that there was something special going on. Uh, we feel we have a chance and just arise. And we'll, we'll see that afterwards. This position here, sort of standard. Uh, calculation thing um, I want to say something before we, we go on with, with what you think you want to do here because I gave you some, some time, extra mm -hmm. time this time for uh, looking at the position um, and in positions uh, which we think are critical and it's always what we guess during the game it's not like you can say afterwards that was a critical moment um, you can, but you cannot say that I should have known it was a critical moment during the game because you didn't, so you didn't. Um, but you can say, oh, I would, it would have been good to know that I have a chance here and how can I learn from that for another time? But during the game, if you have a feeling like, hmm, there could be a chance here, you should slow down and make sure you're accurate. The metaphor I like to use is algebra uh, or maths generally. You cannot guess in maths. If you have a match test and it's like, what is 28 times 42? You cannot guess. You have to work it out. The same with the critical moment. It is the sim the closest thing we come to absolute pure calculation in chess. You have to work it out. You have to calculate. We will not get the accuracy of an engine, uh, human beings, but we can do fairly well still. So in critical moments, we want to have time for them, uh, having made our simple decisions fluently and with, with our good in understanding of chess, and we get a good position, and then we want to calculate, we want to slow down and take our time. So uh, here, black to play, what do you think? Okay, um, obviously there is a, a move that uh, requires some calculation, and this is bishop takes h3. So bishop takes h3 is the chance, as I was mm -hmm. talking about. It's very logical from where the pieces are. The rook on b8 doesn't have a logical 
way to enter the game and uh, also this bishop is hanging so and the bishop's hanging on d7 there's attack from both sides queen d4 is maybe coming mate on g7 and but bishop h3 we see the idea if we don't see the idea we, we don't know it's a critical moment we don't know what we need to calculate but we see the idea and we, we need to calculate so first off i'll ask you what do you want to do on on queen d4 did you see this move um yeah um, but to be honest, I haven't really. I, I wanted to play rook f6. I don't know if, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about rook f6 either. I just know the bishop d7 is very strong here. Ah, yeah, yeah. Because okay, of yes. rook d7, yes, then the check here, and the bishop goes with check. The pawn takes, pawn comes under check, and it wins. So let's go back a little bit. So here, the, the critical move is therefore pawn takes bishop and queen takes. Yes, uh, now I see that my threat is uh, queen h2 check. Queen h2 and g2 check because the bishop will be pinned. Yes. So, so this is the defense. So so we probably made it to here. Yeah, and, and now I think that the g2 is, is the move, but I mean, I think it's winning, but I'm not sure I have exhausted all the possibilities, but this is the first move I was looking at. Yeah, and this is the move. And okay, for uh, for a strong player uh, like myself, th this is not a, a really a difficult combination. We want to check if we get this in a game that is right. Um, but players of your level around 2200, this can be yes, complicated. Mm -hmm. And you can easily lose your focus. and. This is something where training and calculation is very, very useful and a main reason for players at your level to get better, really. Uh, and, you know, in this game, uh, eventually Black did actually win it, but White was also winning many times. Uh, this this is just winning. Uh, queen d4, you can maybe think, oh no, how do I defend mate? And then you see queen h1 check. Learning to go through these things very slowly and calculate accurately. That is a huge part of playing chess well. So that's like, let's say rook g2 and rook f3 and queen d4. We maybe want to see this variation and just see that after queen h6, there's actually no threat. The rook comes to f8, there's queen c1 coming, there's rook h3 coming. That's a winning position. Mm -hmm. And to be able to keep this clear in your head, probably you need some, there's also queen c1, queen f4 is an option here. You actually need some training. Uh, and some experience uh, in, in doing these things and uh, so the, the I recommend you to do that there is not a secret right there is not grandmaster knowledge but the, there is one one little secret uh, I, I describe that in thinking inside the box and I also I describe it in, in calculation um, and thinking inside the box I go deeper into it uh, I, I want to write another book on, on calculation. This this book here, Calculation, is an exercise book with uh, exercises in every chapter. And there's different themes. In every chapter, starting with reasonably easy exercises, going on to very difficult exercises. So uh, when, when you, after this session here, uh, obviously it will be your first decide to sit down with this book and, and work on it, um, you will know that at some point in a chapter, you might hit a brick wall and feel like this is getting too difficult for me. Just go to the next chapter. Mm -hmm. And you go back to the feeling of, I can do this. So maybe solve the first uh, pages of his, each chapter first? Yeah, uh, well, uh, until you feel like you hit a brick wall and then you go to the next chapter. I think it's a natural way to do an exercise book. Okay, but here I just want to show you another position. Mm -hmm. um, this is a position from what I can see where uh, the winner of the B group, Vidit Gurachi, um, from India, uh, also the favorite, very simple winner. He had played very, very cautiously during this game, got nothing really from the opening and just, just played simple moves, keeping a little pressure on, uh, on black. And, was more an, an emotional pressure rather than a, a, pre a pressure in terms of uh, positions. And here at some point, uh, Black made a move that wasn't very good. I think it was King F8. 
and at this time Bluebaum, who's black, he has a few minutes for the rest of the game, two, three minutes. And Davidit has 35 minutes. And uh, it gives you one of these small feelings. And Davidit is an amazing player. Uh, maybe you've seen some of his games. Yeah. He's uh, number 28 in the world, I think, at the moment. 27, 21 or something. And he got the feeling here that um, this is a moment. And he saw this idea, D5. And of course, if black takes twice, we have a tactic. Mm -hmm. We do. Queen takes e8, check. Ah, uh, yes, and knight. And knight c7. I so you said when we do, you didn't actually see it. Uh, no, but uh, no. I know these things from the from scratch book. exercises I'm working on. <laughs> yes. So black uh, had to play passively here, and white is better. But it, black managed to slowly neutralize everything and already here he's, he's okay again and the game was a draw um, <coughs> Vidit made this move after two minutes and uh, he also saw another option which was queen h5 and I was wondering if he sort of just rejected his queen e4 and missed queen e8 check um, and I wrote that in a, in a blog comment and somebody must have told him about it uh, because he sent me a message saying so, do you really think I'm this weak? <laughs> <laughs> and he said that what he was worried about was not... It wasn't like he missed. Uh, he said he wanted to play. But he thought that after king e7, knight f2, he was afraid that the queen would come in and give some perpetuals. But that's just nothing. If you look at this for enough time to, to see it, you can see that the king will be on g2 and everything will be safe and sound. White will take an h6 and it's pawn up and the game goes on but pawn up is a good start you know about this uh, old Russian uh, um, that uh, a knight and a king uh, a knight besides the king always is fine against the queen no never heard of it yeah. sounds like bogus <laughs> <laughs> okay. no uh, no actually that was that was a good one so but what happened here is he had this chance became a critical moment and because he had played with this fluency all the game maybe he just rushed it a bit and the chance went away especially because uh, d5 looked like such a nice move and it's a nice move and it's easy to think that white is much much better white is just better but not much better but if you go deeper into the possession if you have like this is my chance and you just slow down I want to really get this right you see that d5 might be unpleasant for black, but queen h5 wins a pawn. Which is unpleasant for black forever and ever, or at least until the game ends. Um, so th this is not a difficult critical moment, but if we have this instinct that we should slow down and really make sure we're accurate and we should stop guessing, um, then we don't make such mistakes. And uh, so recommend you all to buy uh, calculation uh, which will make me happy and uh, quality chess meaning John happy me as well you don't get percentages anyway um, if you actually also go through the book and, and work with it um, hopefully that can make you happy because it can make you a much better chess player I want to say this about the books um, it's true that I make one and a half euro a little more whenever a copy is sold um, but the value of them is in terms of the tuition is very high I had really really a lot of players uh, contact me and said I was 2300 now I'm 2500 or I was 2200 now I'm 2400 and the main thing I did was go through the exercise books so maybe they, they read other books as well and I had had one message like this just two days ago I was 2300 now I'm 2550 and I won rating every tournament for the last three years and so I've been studying books and I really like your books and I like other books and it's just very nice to get this kind of messages and uh, mm -hmm. um, someone else asked me yesterday for 
uh, private tuition and I don't have time for, for giving private tuition and I asked how much it would cost and how much if you think the six books six in the Grandmaster uh, preparation series if you buy all six books how many hours of tuition could you get with me for do you think one two I know that you're somewhere a bit expensive. In, somewhere in between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's assembly. Um, I very often do things for group teaching with much less, much lower hourly rate because I'm able to interact with more people and work with more people, and, and I like it. Uh, individual tuition is uh, with me is expensive um, because it's just one person uh, benefited from it. Uh, hopefully, and <laughs> hopefully too, yeah. me being paid and uh, and the student uh, but in terms of of uh, chess wise this the student is benefiting uh, and uh, when i do books when i do uh, lectures when we do videos like this hopefully more people will benefit from it and, and i like that much more um, so i do it l less for money and i really recommend getting the books rather than asking me for private lessons uh, it's much more value Okay, let's uh, finish this off. Have you learned anything? Sure. Mm. That I need to go and train a bit. Uh, I, I think you. Were, I was uh, was hopeful I uh, taught you something about uh, night folks. Yeah. That, that was what since uh, since we we had uh, in the previous video you had made in one for you and I had to learn about cal counting <laughs> the material. So. Uh, Let's go on to the most difficult subject in the final and fifth video, which will be on strategic decisions. Strategic decisions.